So we are only a few days away from the Apple event and Mr. Timothy Cook himself is leaking some tidbits on what to expect, and so let's delve into it. Essentially, the other day, Apple had an earnings call and obviously investors had some serious questions, particularly about AI. That's the big buzzword in tech right now. And I did mention in a previous video that a lot of industry insiders think Apple's behind in this aspect. But obviously, Tim being Tim, he wants to keep the investors happy and so he does emphasize AI features are coming very, very soon. He then gives us some waffle about how Apple's generative AI is going to have advantages that set them apart from the competition because they have a unique combination of software, hardware and services integration. But that's just marketing waffle because we already know they're using OpenAI's technology since if you can't beat them, just give them a ton of money to use their tech instead. Now, obviously, Tim is being pretty vague on purpose and doesn't tell us when exactly we can expect these brand new AI features. But him bringing up AI and doubling down on it right before the Let Loose event does heavily suggest the recent rumor regarding the 2024 iPad Pro getting the M4 is actually legit. I can definitely see them branding M4 as the first AI-powered chipset, which could help improve sales and help market this iPad. We've also heard M4's main upgrade is going to be a new neural engine for AI features, and Tim does briefly mention an upgraded neural engine is on the way, so expect Apple to flex this everywhere in the iPad Pro marketing material alongside the OLED upgrades. Why else could we see M4? Well, the next possible reason Apple's rushing out M4 is because the competition is heating up, particularly Snapdragon's Elite X chipsets are starting to seem promising and so maybe Apple wants something that can better compete with that. M3 is based on the flawed TSMC M3B process and so they might want to move to the more efficient M3E process as soon as possible with M4. Now, does that mean M4 is going to be 200% faster than M3? Probably not. I expect minimal upgrades, but it all comes back to AI, guys. A lot of industry people feel Apple's behind in this aspect, and so even if the performance upgrades are minimal, as long as M4 packs tons of AI goodness, it should be pretty well received by the tech nerds. Finally, there have been chip IDs that leaked for the iPad Pro suggesting there would be a brand new unreleased chipset, T8122 is the chip identifier for M3, but the identifier that has leaked is T8132, which does point towards the iPad Pro gaining a newer M4 chipset. So yes, all of these valid points have sort of convinced me that yes, there is a good chance Apple goes ahead with M4 on the iPad Pro, and I guess lay the foundations for AI before they release new software at WWDC. But I'm guessing they're switching to M4 mainly to convince many people to upgrade, since those still 2018 iPad Pros haven't had much of a reason to upgrade, so they're going all out with the OLED iPads to get you guys to spend some cash. Also, I think more reviewers like myself are now going to be in interested in playing around with these iPads because it has a fancy new chipset and some more reviewers giving their thoughts on these iPads increases the traction they get and I'm also sure some consumers are going to fall for the AI buzzwords that Apple's going to make a huge fuss about. But you know what I'm going to make a huge fuss about guys? The fact you should subscribe to this channel of course. I would greatly appreciate it and it would bring you the latest about Apple right to subscription box so please consider it. We're trying to hit our next milestone of 16,000 subscribers so join the Saran Bike gang now. Now getting M4 early is cool and all but at the end of the day I really hope they at least preview some of the software features we can expect with iPad OS 18 because it is still pretty crazy to me that the iPad out of all products is getting M4 first when the software experience is so restricted. Remember this meme from a few years ago? Yes it very much is like putting a V8 engine in a Ford Fiesta and all we've heard about iPad OS 18 is a new calculator app so clearly that's gonna be pushing the M4 and we definitely don't need macOS like features. Anyways, jokes aside, German does not mention this in his report, but if the iPad Pro is getting the M4, does this mean the iPad Air could get M3 instead of the M2 as rumored? I mean, at the end of the day, whether this has the M2 or M3 probably doesn't make a massive difference to most consumers. But hey, I'll take a slightly better chipset, especially since M2 is going to be two years old and M3 was just released in October. M3 would also bring ray tracing to the mid-tier iPad for those into gaming, but I'm not sure if it's going to increase the price or not. I'm hoping there is no price increase because the iPad Air already is pretty expensive as is. 
for an LCD iPad. Finally, German drops one more interesting tidbit that I want to talk about, and that is haptic feedback for the pencil. I saw this coming. I talked about this in my dedicated video regarding the new pencil. They can check out in the icon above, but essentially, we heard about new squeeze gestures for the pencil, so to prevent accidental triggers, I thought it made sense to add haptics. Also, I believe there was a patent suggesting the pencil could imitate different drawing surfaces. So for example, the feel you get from drawing on rough paper, and so I can see haptics coming into play there as well. I'm quite excited to see the new changes with the pencil, considering Apple's marketing so far is centered around it, but let's hope it works with other iPad models as well. Now that we're done with the new tidbits, let's recap, hopefully for the last time, everything we know about the new iPad Air Pro. Beginning with the iPad Air 6, this is mostly a spec refresh with M2, or now M3, being the key upgrade, but for the first time, there is going to be a new 12.9 inch size option. In theory, launching this does make sense because I'm sure there's a decent chunk of consumers who want the big display experience the iPad Pros always offered, but without the massive price tag. And so this should be adequate enough for most, but like I've mentioned many times on the channel, this won't exactly be a cheap iPad. You see, based on the fact the 12.9 inch iPad Pro used to be $200 more when it had LCD like the 11 inch, there is a strong possibility the larger Air starts at $799, which is very much iPad Pro territory. That's currently how much the 11 inch goes for, and yes, I know the upcoming iPad Pros are getting more expensive, but it's still a tough pill to swallow. Honestly, it's clear to me Apple's only releasing this just to continue creating the perfect ladder of choices. So if you go into the Apple store thinking you want the 12.9 inch iPad Air 6, but then you see the iPad Pro for $200 more, you're likely gonna go for the Pro instead, which will make Timothy very happy because he just manipulated you, what an evil man. Anyways, moving to the M4 iPad Pro, this has been long rumored to be a big upgrade for the Pros, considering these iPads have basically been the same since 2018, and the big change is going to be OLED. This is of course something we're already familiar with on the iPhone and Apple Watch, and it's going to give these iPads a ton of benefits, like increased brightness, higher contrast ratio, lower power consumption, and also LTPO text so that the display can go down to 10 hertz to save battery life. And yes, notice how I said iPads in plural because it's heavily rumored the 11 inch is no longer going to be left out. It's getting the same display as its higher end counterparts, which hasn't been the case since 2020. Not only this, but Apple is also using the same LiPo technology they used on iPhone 15 Pro to shrink the bezels. So the new display should be 11.1 inches and 13 inches, and it seems the actual bodies aren't getting that much larger. However, they'll be ever so slightly different so that of course, you have to go buy a more expensive Magic Keyboard, which isn't fun. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and thank you for watching.